Well, we're back here uh, <clears throat> at the Cave of Science, and we're looking at Unit 3, Worksheet Number 4. So let's look at the first problem here. How much energy must be absorbed by a 150-gram sample of ice at zero that melts and then warms up 25 degrees Celsius? Really, when you, as you're working, these, really a, uh, a little graph will help to really explain what's happening as you are working these problems. So let's go ahead and do one here. So we've got time here, and then we've got temperature. And we got 150 grams, we have it at zero degrees Celsius. And it's going to melt. So it's going to melt, so it's going to, let's just say we start here, it's going to melt, and then it's going to warm to 25. And that's going to be 25 degrees. So really we've got two processes going on here. We've got to melt the ice and then we're going to warm the liquid water uh, up to 25 degrees Celsius. So let's uh, start this off here. So we know we got to know how much energy and the first thing we got to do is melt the ice. So Q equals the mass times the heat of fusion. Now remember, we're at zero already, so now we just gotta go ahead and we've got to melt this all this ice here. So we have Q, we have a mass of 150 grams. And again, if you want to put grams in, if not, I'm gonna leave that up to you. And we got to know the heat of fusion, which is 334 joules per gram. So 334 joules per gram. Well, so how much energy do we have? We have Q equals 50,100 joules. So that got us to melt the ice. Now we got to take that ice and we've got to uh, or excuse me, now we gotta take the liquid water and we gotta raise it to 25 degrees. So let's just call this Q1, keep us out of trouble here. So we did this part right here, now we've gotta do this. Well, we know, and we're gonna call this Q2, and we know that equals mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. So we know Q2 equals mass is gonna be 150 grams. Specific heat of liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we have a change in temperature from 0 to 25. So our change in temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So Q2, when you multiply all this out, is going to equal 15,600 joules. Well, that's Q2. Now we want to know the total. So total energy is going to be Q1 plus Q2. Q1 was 50,100 joules plus Q2 was 15,600 joules. So our answer is 65,700 joules. Oops, let's see if I get that up there a little bit. There we go. So there's our answer. Whoops, get it all the way up. I'm sorry. So there's our answer for the uh, for problem number one there. All right, let's look at problem number two. Suppose in the icy hot lab that the burner transfer, transfers 325 kilojoules of energy to 450 grams of liquid water at 20 degrees. What mass of the water would be boiled away? All right, so again, let's, let's do a little graph here. So we have our graph, and we've got time, and we've got temperature. So we've got some water at 20 degrees. 
and we know it's going to go up to a hundred. So we can take it up there. So we're taking it up to a uh, hundred degrees. And then we want to know we're going to boil some of that water off. So we're going to be out here somewhere. So we're going to boil some water off. So the first thing we can do, let's take our kilojoules and we got to convert that to joules. So that's one thing we've got to do uh, do right off the bat. Let's see how much how many joules that is. So 325 kilojoules. Again, I like to put it over one times one kilojoule is 1,000 joules. And so that is going to give us, when we uh, multiply all that out, that's going to give us 325,000 joules. So that's really the amount of energy we have to work with. All right, so let's take the water, take it from uh, 20 degrees, and we know, get it up around boiling, it's going to be 100 degrees Celsius. So it's liquid, so we can use... And again, let's just, we'll call this Q. Well, again, it's Q. So we've got Q equals MC delta T. All right. So we know Q equals M. And we've got 450 grams. And we know the specific heat of liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius and we know the change in temperature we're going from uh, 20 to 100 so that's going to be 80 degrees Celsius so Q at this point is going to equal 150,000 joules and that's to get the water or get it up to a hundred degrees Celsius. So we've got it, we've got it up to there. Well, now we know we've got 325,000 joules, and it takes a hundred and fifty thousand joules to get it up to from zero, or excuse me, from 20 to 100. So let's go ahead and see what we got, see what we got left over. So we've got 325,000 joules. We used 150,000 joules. So that gives us 175,000, 175,000 joules to play with here. All right, so now we want to see we got that much energy left, and let's see how much it's going to boil away. So we know Q, and we have a mass, and now we got to use the heat of vaporization. So we've got this much to play with. We got 175,000 joules. We want to know how many grams, what mass, is going to boil away, so we don't know that. And we know the heat of vaporization is 2260 joules per gram. Well, doing the math, we can calculate that what the mass that will be boiled away is going to be approximately 77.4 grams and that's going to be the amount that's going to be evaporated so out of that 300 450 we can actually evaporate 77.4 all right so that's problem two let's look at problem number three Another sheet of paper here Fold this over so we can work with it a little bit easier. Alright, so let's look at problem three here. 
got a 12 ounce can of soft drink. Uh, we're going to assume that's 340 grams at 25 degrees. You're going to put it in a freezer where the temperature is minus 12. How much energy must be removed for the soft drink to reach this temperature? And we want to get it at a minus 12. So, again, let's make our little graph here. So we're starting at 25. So we've got to take it down to zero. So we take it down to zero degrees. Then we've got to freeze it. And again, this is time. This is temperature. And then we want to take it all the way down to a minus 12. So we can bring it down to here. So we've got minus 12 here. So what this is, this really ends up becoming a three-step problem. So let's call the first. So we got to get to find the energy from here, take it down to zero, freeze it, and then take solid ice and take down to a negative 12. So Q1, we can call this one Q1, is MC delta T, and this is for the liquid. All right, so we gotta know how much energy. So Q1, we got a mass of 340 grams. And we know C is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius and our change in temperature we're going from 25 to 0 it's going to be 25 degrees C so Q1 is going to equal 35,530 joules so that's Q1 so we've got that now we've got to freeze it so let's call this Q2. So Q2 equals M times the heat of fusion, because we are now freezing. We are now freezing our material there, so that is going to be the, the heat of fusion on there. So what we're going to do so what we're going to do there, as we've got that, oops, we know Q2, we still got the same mass, that's not going to change, 340 grams, and we know the heat of fusion is going to be 334 joules per gram, 334 joules per gram. Alright, math pretty simple here. So we can go ahead and multiply that out. So Q2 equals 113560 joules. So now we got it all frozen. So the next step is to take it from 0 to a minus 12. And I'm going to put that over here and we're going to call that Q3. Well, this is it's no phase change. This is a solid, solid state going down to minus 12 degrees. So we can use the formula MC delta T. All right, so Q3, mass stays the same. And that's grams. And we know C for a solid, or the heat capacity of solid water, is 2.1. 2.1 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And we've got a change of temperature of about 12 degrees here. Oh, I'm going to run out of room here a little bit. So we can go ahead and do the math. Q3 is going to be 85,000, or eight, excuse me, 8,568 joules. 
so we've got Q1, we got Q2, and we got Q3. So we're going to add Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, and that comes out to approximately uh, 100. Let's see, 160,000 joules, give or take a couple. All right, that's all I'm going to put on this one. I'm going to do uh, a couple more problems on the uh, next one. So we'll see you on the flip side.